Hey guys, this is Nick from Financially Aware, and in this video, I want to talk about the possible buyout of Grubhub by Uber. Is this a good idea? And is it a good idea to now buy Uber stock or Grubhub stock or both of them or neither of them? Well, for anybody who has ordered uh, online food, you know that the fees are pretty high. So a lot of people probably might think that putting Uber and Grubhub together, they'll just print money. But that's not really the case with these food delivery services. So let's take a look at the earnings for Grubhub for the last few years. 2016, they made about 10% on their revenue. 2017, they made about 14% on their revenue. 2018, they made about 8% on their revenue. And 2019, their revenue increased to 1.3 billion and yet they lost money. Now let's take a look at Uber's earnings. 2016, they lost money. 2017, they lost money. 2018, they had a gain of almost a billion dollars, but that's because they sold a business off, I believe. And 2019, this is before coronavirus, they lost $8.5 billion. So some of you may remember from math class that when you multiply a negative number by another negative number, you get a positive number. Uh, that may work in math, but that doesn't necessarily work in business. Uber just reported their first quarter revenue a few days ago, and once again, they lost money. That's nothing surprising. Their EBITDA earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization was a loss of 612 million but their net loss was 2.94 billion so they're <laughs> they're losing a lot of money still uh, and this is before the shutdown only like the last two weeks of their quarter included any kind of shutdown um, of uber rides and stuff so uh, what's more interesting here is the Uber Eats. So even though Uber Eats last, last year, same quarter, was $239 million, and this quarter in 2020, it jumped to $527 million, 121% gain in their revenue. So what's the net effect in earnings on that huge gain? Oh, a bigger loss <laughs> a one percent bigger loss so last year they lost 309 million on 239 million in revenue this year same quarter they lost 313 million on even more revenue so they more than doubled their revenue but they have pretty much the same amount of loss from uber eats so you see this uber eats is not that profitable profitable neither is any of these food delivery uh, companies and here you see that uber got rid of 3700 jobs because of the lockdowns they're saying that uh you know in april their rides were down 80 percent uh from the from the month before so they slashed 3,700 of their 26,900 employees, 14% of their workforce. What's really surprising about that, one is none of these employees are actual Uber drivers. They're, these are back office employees, uh, recruiting employees and things like that. So what's really surprising is that Uber has 27,000 employees, none of which are actual drivers. So uh, I don't know why they have so many employees just for a driving app and you know Uber Eats app. But a lot of them are for um, recruiting new drivers because that's always a problem because once people figure out that it's not really worth it to ruin their car to drive for Uber or Lyft, um, they have high turnover. So they have to uh, keep recruiting new people all the time. So I guess if they're not having a lot of rides going on, then they don't need to recruit a lot of new drivers. And so that's why they reduced their headcount by 3,700. 
So it doesn't make sense that Uber Eats and Grubhub are barely breaking even or losing money on their Eats deliveries when all you hear are these stories on how much they charge these restaurants. A lot of them charge like 30% or so to the restaurants for each order. So how is it that they're not making money? Well, it's because they charge the small guys big fees, but they charge the big guys small fees. And it's gotten to the point where some cities are even trying to limit how much these uh, food delivery apps can charge to the restaurants. Now this, this is a story that's gone viral about a pizza truck owner and how much he actually makes from his Grubhub orders. Um, so let's take a look at that. He's had 46 orders that was $1,042. After 200 in commission, delivery commission, processing fees, promotions, order adjustments, more commissions, delivery commissions, more processing fees, promotions, whatever. Um, he netted $376 from this. So let's look at those numbers. On 46 orders at 1,042, that means each order average was $22.60. He netted 376 on 46 orders, which is about $8.17. And if you know about the food business, uh, at least restaurants, I'm not sure food trucks may have lower overhead, but basically they charge three times the, the food cost. So in this case, if he charged twenty two sixty per order, his food cost should be one third of that or seven dollars and fifty three cents. And yet he's only netting eight dollars and seventeen cents. So that's only like 64 cents profit per order. Um, you know, Grubhub's getting the majority of it. And I can, I can verify this. I have a friend who had a diner in Manhattan and when Seamless first came out, which got bought by Grubhub later on, they're a subsidiary of Grubhub. But he was telling me how they would send people over all the time to beg him to become a customer they even paid them to become customers that's that's before they had any real big revenue or market share so they were doing all kinds of things to get these restaurant owners to become customers and charge really low fees like eight percent or something like that and he said they were real persistent they sent you know pretty saleswomen over to try to schmooze the owners and stuff like that so they really uh, were really persistent in getting you to sign up. And then once you, once you did and they started getting a lot of revenue and they were the only game in town, then they started jacking up their fees and they were doing things kind of like, kind of like what Amazon or Google does. You had to pay more to get displayed at the top of their listing page. Otherwise, nobody would find you so you'd be kind of invisible so yeah you could pay eight or ten percent fee or you can pay the thirty percent fee and actually get you know get people to order and so that's that's kind of where they're at where they say oh yeah we have these low fees but if you want anybody to actually see you you're kind of paying a, a advertising or a marketing fee to them among these other fees to get prominently displayed on the first page or whatever. So, uh, like I said, they charge a lot to these small guys, but let's see what they charge to the big guys. So here's Uber Eats strategy, and their strategy is to partner up with Starbucks and McDonald's, and this was in their IPO filing, I remember reading this also. And so, you think Starbucks and McDonald's is paying Uber Eats 30% for their orders? No, uh, they're not paying anything close to that. And it says that, uh, you know, their Uber Eats services are less than the 30% commission fee it demands from smaller unit restaurants on its platform. And that goes the same for Grubhub as well. So Grubhub is the official delivery partner of Yum! Brands, which is Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC. And according to the details of their partnership in 2008, 
Yum Brands do not pay any delivery fees. So if you're a small guy, you're paying through the nose. If you're a big guy, you're not paying anything or very little because of, you know, you get prominently displayed in McDonald's or Starbucks advertising. So it brings more people to your platform and in the hopes that they order more from you than just McDonald's or Taco Bell or Starbucks or whatever. So what's the reason Uber would want to buy Grubhub? Uh, well, they want to team up. Uh, you, the usual corporate speak is because of synergies and economies of scale and they can reduce redundancies in their workforce, meaning get rid of some of the people at Grubhub. Uh, but they really hope is that they'll be big enough that uh, they could maybe raise prices if there's not a lot of competition. Uh, that's kind of their idea for the taxi market in the U.S., but because of Lyft, um, you know, they have a competitor that could lower their prices just as easily as they can. So um, they hope to kind of do the same thing and get big enough where they can control pricing a little bit. Right now, it's not easy, but What's interesting is this chart on sales of food delivery in the U.S. from 2018 to 2020. You see back here when it's indexed at 100, Grubhub had like 50% of the market. Now, food sales have increased 100% in two years. Grubhub is still at the same level, but now it's at 28% because since the food prices, the revenue has doubled, their share has stayed relatively flat. So now they're only at a quarter of the market at this level of sales when before they were half of the market. And Uber Eats, you know, has grown a little bit. Um, but the real surprising thing is DoorDash. Look at DoorDash was a very small piece back here in 2018. And now they've overcome Uber Eats and Grubhub. They're 42% of the market. I have no idea how they did that, but um, you know, Uber Eats hopes to put their 20% with Grubhub's 28% and be like 50% of the market and compete that way. And. Uh, one one other reason for the Grubhub thing is that Grubhub is like 62% market share in New York City. So that's a big market. And so I guess that's kind of like a crown jewel kind of thing for, for Uber. So that's why they want it. It's big in the Northeast, New York City and Boston, uh, even Philadelphia, it's pretty big. And Washington, D.C., not so much, but... Um, whereas DoorDash is big in Houston and Dallas, Fort Worth, and even San Francisco, they're huge. So why is Uber thinking of buying Grubhub now? Well, for one thing, the stock price has been falling a lot. And so it's kind of cheap relatively to where it was. And you see it fell down to $30 in March although it has bounced up a lot because of this rumor coming out, it's up like 30%, but that doesn't matter that much to Uber because Uber will be paying with stock if they do this and they'll be giving somewhere around two, 2.1 shares uh, of, of Uber stock for each Grubhub stock. So, uh, you know, when Uber fell down here to $14 a share, maybe, uh, it wasn't that attractive to Grubhub at the time because supposedly they've been talking about this deal for a number of months now. But now that uh, Uber has bounced back, maybe now's a good time for them to do it. And, you know, realistically, this deal is not going to really move the needle for Uber anytime soon, if at all, as you see that, you know, it's a commodity business and people are very price sensitive and they're not very loyal to who delivers their food. Um, and their Uber's main business is down 80% since, uh, you know, in, in April. I don't know what it is for May and is going to be challenging going forward um, to get that revenue level back. So they're kind of trying a couple different things, it looks like. And maybe this is like a distraction 
to try to keep people invested in the stock, um, you know, with their hopes up saying, hey, we're buying Grubhub, we're going to get big into food delivery, we'll be the biggest competitor out there. Um, but, uh, you know, there's headwinds there. There's already people talking about antitrust violations and stuff like that for it to get approved. So who knows what's going to happen. But, um, you know, this is not really earth shattering for the bottom line for Uber. So I wouldn't buy Grubhub here, the stock, because it's already up a lot on this rumor. And I wouldn't buy Uber because of this Grubhub news, because it's not really going to add to their earnings. Um, if anything, it may add to their losses for a little while until they figure things out. Um, and I don't know what DoorDash is doing right, but they are running circles around Uber and Grubhub. So, uh, you know, is that going to change if, if Uber and Grubhub combine? Who knows? So that's my video on Uber's potential purchase of Grubhub. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment if you think that this merger is a good idea and if it will start making money sometime in the future, this food delivery business uh, for Uber and Grubhub combined. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.